Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. On the show this week, I ride my childhood dream bike. I can't wait for that. But first, Matt and Harry do the job I was supposed to do last week. Personally, I am very glad indeed that Donovan decided to go with the 650 and leave the Z900 to me because, well, more a bit later, it is a tremendous motorbike, but it's a fantastically important bike for Kawasaki. Do you know why? I don't, but I think you're about to tell I me. I am about to tell you because I'm feeling quite smug and uh, full of it. <laughs> I've researched this. It's actually, these models are uh, Kawasaki's best sellers and big numbers obviously mean big, pro big profits and, and that's what's important for Kawasaki's business. Now you might look at this as a Z900 and think, well, they shrunk the Z1000, but no. This is in fact a replacement for the Z800, Z750. Mm. Now that's been one of their best sellers, over, over 200,000. I don't if you remember the Z750, about 2004, my wife actually had one, she liked it. Did she? Yes, very There's nice. a glowing... Uh, you know, well, obviously she had someone to ask about what was a good bike to get, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> obviously. Uh, they had that 750 for quite a long time, and I think it was about 20. 12 that they made at the 800. The Z800, yeah, yes. You remember you actually tested, we tested that with an MV. We did. You liked it, didn't you? A lot. I really liked it. It was around the track, it was for a novice, which I was at the time, and some mm. would say I still am. Um, it was really sort of forgiving and smooth, whereas the MV was twitchy and like, felt like it was going to kill you. Exciting then. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, the Z800 to me, at the track, it's unfair to take it to the track because it was a little bit out of its depth. You can do that sort of thing, but to compare it to an Italian piece of exotica, that wasn't fair really. But on the road, it was Z800 lovely. was absolutely superb, wasn't it? You didn't really like it at the track, but then when mm. you rode it on the road later, you actually, oh, I have to change this my opinion on this. pretty good. Yeah. Now, the only thing that let it down really is a totally involving ride is the fact that uh, the Z750 and Z800 used kind of the same chassis, the same frame. It was pretty heavy. It was. It was pretty damn it heavy. It was lardy. And the motor was... Nice. It was nice. It's a bit that, flat. It, yeah, it's A pretty, lot of revs for not much action. Very smooth and... It did rev very, very, very high, and yes. yeah, but it was a little bit lacking. Yeah. yeah. So look, this is uh, I thought before I picked this up. I'm I'm supposed to be a, a journalist who looks at all the press releases, but I saw this one come <laughs> across my desk, and I thought, oh, I warmed up Z800. That'll be interesting. Ooh. But but actually, wow, what a thing. So what have they? Well, let's tackle it right from the basic stuff. Looks Z800 was a cracking looking bike, wasn't it? It was the first of those sort of new look Kawasaki's, like yes. sort of insectoid with this you know, mad front headlight like the treatment. the anime, uh, whatever is it, the Japanese cartoons yeah. and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was, it was a mad looking thing. And it's from the side, this has the same look, but it's got this deep seat with this huge high tank which is actually really, really comfortable to, to sit I think around. it even looks... Uh, I love the front end. I think it looks a little bit better. Believe it or not, I noticed when I, uh, I picked this up from Kawasaki that um, in profile, it's hard, it's hard to believe, but if you look at this in profile, it's, it's an H2. Exactly what you're saying, that sunken in seat, that big, tall tank. Yeah, that humped that tank moves here. moves down to the front. Remember, H2 is also kind of semi-naked. Yes. Uh, and then a really high tail unit. So mm. there's actually a bit of family resemblance in there. And the other bit of family resemblance is they've gone to this trellis frame Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Which this has massive ramifications, doesn't huge it? Huge ramifications. OK, where the, where the old bike, let's talk about the handling itself. Really lively, really involving. It's one of those bikes that sort of asks you to go through those set of corners again, but, you know, give it a bit of stick this time, because it's easily coping with what you can mm. throw at it. Uh, so really light steering, really quite quick turning. Yeah. No signs of instability. I've been just been down a quite bumpy back road on it. We've been doing some filming. I was a little bit nervous. Naked bikes can mm. be a bit, especially with all that leverage. I tell you what, proper, proper bike for attacking a set of uh, roads, a set of bends. Um, yes, but you are right, the ramifications, other than its actual, why it feels so alive, we've got here, which again is a derivative of the H2. You think of the H2, it uses this casting plus the tubular plus the, steel yes. trellis frame. Yes. Now, they've used exactly the same thing on this bike, and the Z900, bigger engine and all, is actually, I can't get my head around this, 21 kilos lighter than, than the, the 800. 800. Uh, that's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Bigger engine, more power, yeah. less weight. Uh, the frame itself is 13 kilos lighter than the Z800. The frame on, on its own. Yeah, just because that used to be a steel heavy. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, it's. Uh, yeah, it 13 was kilos saved there, weight saved everywhere else. So it, 21 kilos, you can, honestly, you can't get your head around it. It has literally transformed this bike. This is not a grown up Z800. This is a. 
a smaller Z1000. It's a shrunk Z1000. Yes. Which kind of puts Kawasaki into a bit of a weird position now, because now they've got a Z1000 and they've got the Z900, which is actually 950. Yes, yeah, 950. So basically, I think that you're going to see the, the, the Z1000 going to go. Yeah. And so, well, this is a middleweight bike, but more about that in a moment. So, yeah, let's talk about the engine. It isn't a grown up 800. It's, it's a, a shrunk It's thousand. a shrunk thousand, although not by that much. <laughs> it's 948cc. What they've done is basically sleeve down a cylinder. It's still got the same stroke. Uh, it's but mad, isn't it, that a, a, a 950cc bike is now called a middleweight? Well, this is, this is one What's of the things that? you get. I mean, a middleweight, we all know our 600s, aren't they? 604, 675 triples, that's yeah. what middleweights are. But no, this is no. now a 950. It's a 950, it's nearly <laughs> a thousand, that's ridiculous. And in a weird way, that's sad because if you're new to biking, you might be put off by saying, oh, Mum, Dad, I'm off to get myself a 900, are you? No, you're not. <laughs> Don't know what sort of <laughs> household you grew up in. bike. <laughs> <laughs> Working class, lad. Yorkshire. <laughs> Don't mind the whole thing. <laughs> Brutality. Um, OK, and the engine now makes 126 horsepower, which is up 11, I think it is, yeah. from the 800. Yep. Significant increase on its own, but make that with a huge weight loss, and wow. You've got a totally new bike. This is no update. This is a completely totally new bike. And I'll tell you something else because I actually also rode this bike uh, for quite a while before Matt tested it and the gearbox oh, isn't it it's like, it's like the, the, <laughs> the smallest micro switch yeah. it just click 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 really it's small travel on the lever and it's got a it's got an, a slipper and assist clutch yes. so it's super light at the lever which yeah. you, don't, you don't need to use it that gearbox is fantastic it is unadjustable slipper clutch but you don't know, I felt it working at times it does a great job it stops it chattering and bouncing all the time on top of which you've also got Mind you, it's, I was going to say you've got great braking, but you don't get bad braking very There's often, no do you? There's no thing, really, But this braking. has got fancy pedal discs that Kawasaki always do. They look great. It's got ABS. Mm. I do like the ABS system. It doesn't chime in too intrusively. In fact, everything now is... It sounds positive. Overly glowing, perhaps. But so I don't what... know about you, but there's a couple of things that do irritate me. You... Yes. I think we, should, we agree on one. Yes, so which is? These new instruments. It's almost like everyone's trying to outdo each other on the quirkiness of their instruments. Now, this has got a, a digital rev counter, so it's like a digital needle that moves around. In the intermediate gears, if you go over a certain... It's low, 6, 7,000 RPM. 6, 7, RPM. It starts flashing at you. The whole and thing. The whole, the whole rev counter starts flashing at you. It's really, really distracting. It's beyond annoying. I can't, <laughs> I'm trying to think that it's a joke and we don't know how to turn it it's, off or it's, whatever. It's, to tell you to, it's basically saying how you can ride more economically. That's what it is. So don't rev it too high in the intermediate With your years. chin on the tank, screaming <laughs> like a little girl, you really want to be reminded they're using a bit too much fuel. Yes. Yeah, that is irritating. I, the comfort is OK for a naked bike, but I was surprised taller people would need to be... I don't know if you notice, the foot pegs are actually quite high. There's not that much room for your legs. Yeah, you, you do. your feet are sort of right up. And we did, uh, in the interest of science... We did. Uh, ...a bit of a pillion test. We did. How was that? Pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's good. For, I mean, look at the, the height difference. Between, yes. So I am looking right over your head, yeah. which is great, but it is really uncomfortable. And, and more than half an hour on that, you'd be screaming to be let off. Yes. And then again, the, the pegs are quite high, so you're sort of hunched up. Look, it's not. It's not. It's not meant for people. It's not is really it? meant. It's, you're not going to go touring on this with your wife. You but know, you know, it, there are better naked bikes to be a pillion on. Um, okay. Well, there are a couple of negatives. What? is possibly one of its greatest positives, in a way, is the price. This comes in here in South Africa at 139,900 Rand, which is exactly the same as the MT-09 Yamaha that we tried last week yes. or a couple of weeks ago. But it's got more horsepower, and I think it's lighter, and it's, it just feels that bit more sporty and exciting. So I immediately want to say, what an absolute bargain. But you're not going to, are but you? But I'm not going to, no, because I've spent some time with it, and for the same price, this is missing rider modes. Yes. So you don't have a wet setting or anything like that. Yeah. I can live without that. I that's think most enough. people can live without yeah. that. Yeah, that's just, that's just down to your, your right yes. hand, isn't yeah. it? So, but it doesn't have... Traction control. Now, we might be... It might sound like we're being really fussy here, having traction control, but to be honest, it certainly saved me. I know it saved it you It saved a few me times. on the road. Look, a lot of a Donovan, if he was here, he'd be absolutely ripping into us. Who, a proper man, doesn't need traction <laughs> control? <laughs> Actually, we do. It's a fantastic rider aid. It does help safety. Mm. And if you were to... I suspect, look, in certain markets, it will come with traction control. I suspect it's a price issue. Must be. If you, if you put traction control, it's going to be 159,000 Rand, then it's not competitive anymore. So, yes, it is a bargain. Yes, it is slightly old school in the way that it's got no traction control and rider modes. It is new school in the way it looks. And it's just, it's just a really 
fun, good motorbike that you can do your sport riding on, you can do your commuting on, and as long as your partner is about two foot tall and only has one buttock, you'll have a great time touring with it as well. <laughs> So you quite, agree with me? So it's quite a narrow market. Yeah, it, is, it is for pillions, yeah, it's quite a... <laughs> no, I agree with you. I absolutely love this thing. It's kind of almost every bike that you need. Yes. It's all the bike yes. you need. With a bit of excitement thrown in. Yeah. Kawasaki Z900, say bye to the 1000, say bye to the 800. This is the new king, no doubt about it.